everyone. Thanks for joining today for Taproot TV. I'm Emily Fritt and I'm here with Ken Reed and we're going to talk about the number one cause of equipment failure. Absolutely, yeah. It's an interesting topic. Uh, I think uh, Mark had a blog article or something on this, if I remember yep. right. Yeah. Yep. Check out yeah. uh, taproot.com forward slash blog and you'll see a lot of articles. If you search for equipment failure, you'll see all the ones that we've written. Yeah. Um, but uh, yes, I, we wanted to talk about equipment failure and um, in the article Mark says you know he did a Google search he mm -hmm. saw the you know top six uh, the first ones that show up they all point back to this one thing yeah it's yeah. always human error right somebody yeah. a human making a mistake and uh, uh, it's funny as you're uh, as equipment troubleshooters you're you're usually focused on the equipment so when a pump goes bad or a compressor dies um, you're, you're really looking at, well, why did that compressor break or what allowed that pump to fail and um, why did the bearing overheat, and, and, which are great questions. You've, you've got to figure that out. Um, and we have several tools, obviously, in Taffer to help with that, and with Equifactor, it helps you with these equipment troubleshooting tables. Um, but I always like to tell people that you, those equipment troubleshooting tables are really designed to give you um, what I call the physical cause of the incident. So when the pump stops working, the physical cause might be that we didn't put the right lubricant in the bearing. Right. So that's our physical cause. And maybe that's what the Equifactor table's got for us. Um, unfortunately, what Mark Google searched for is exactly that. So the answer would be, oh, well, we didn't put the right lubricant in the bearing. Mm -hmm. And then the corrective action is make sure we put the right lubricant in next time. Well, that's not really a root cause. The root cause isn't bad lubricant. The root cause really needs to get to the human error. Right. And, and how did we make this mistake? Um, so Equifactor is a really good, uh, and equipment troubleshooting in general is usually really good at getting to that physical cause. We put the wrong lubricant in. Uh, but oftentimes we need a little bit more help in understanding, you know, the thing didn't lubricate itself. There was a human involved. And get, digging deep enough into the human performance issues about why the equipment failed is really um, what a lot of companies miss when they're doing their equipment troubleshooting. Operator error. It's something simple to just say, oh, well, you messed up, all right? Let's just uh, kind of figure it out, do a little trial and error. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And probably, I didn't see which ones Mark particularly pulled up on his Google search, but I'll guarantee they were all in that line, in that mode where it was just, yeah, the operator made that mistake. Um, what are we going to do about it? Well, just replace the bearing and we're fine. Or and replace the whole unit. You know, we've only replaced it so many times. This is just junk. Yeah, it's just know? a piece of junk. Let's get a new piece. And, right. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and sometimes that might be a good answer, but, uh, but it really needs to be more evaluated. And then make sure that human doesn't screw up the new one when we put that in. Because, uh, you know, if all we do is replace the bearing and not fix the human performance problem, um, the new bearing is going to fail again. And we're just going to keep going back over and over it. So Yeah, I was uh, just kind of digging into some of those articles and a lot of uh, just in the, the taproot mythology of things, it's um, first we have to understand what happened. That's right. Before we can understand why it happened. That's right. And, and just as importantly, before we get into corrective actions, mm -hmm. you know, because... Uh, um, equipment failures are real easy to just dive directly to corrective actions without going through the full um, analysis process where you've looked for what happened. We skip right over the why in many cases, for equipment failures especially, and we get right to corrective actions. Um, and that's where uh, a good root cause analysis system can really uh, ensure that you're not having these repeat failures show up over and over again. Um, because we're, we, we don't want to skip that why. We don't want to make that right. piece of it. Um, there's been a lot of uh, studies done, and it depends on who you talk to and what exactly the study was. Uh, but many of these studies have found that over 90% of equipment failures are not due to the equipment failing. Um, it's due to humans mm -hmm. touching the equipment. <laughs> you yeah. know, the human either bought the wrong equipment, they installed the equipment wrong, they turned it on wrong, they shut it down wrong, they did the wrong maintenance on it. Um, if, if you talk to a bearing manufacturer, he'll tell you the bearing should last for 20 years, right? Unless, of course, the human gets involved. <laughs> and then, which we do. And which we do. That's, that's what we do, and that's okay. Uh, but, man uh, versus machine, right? Man, <laughs> it seems like it sometimes. Yeah. It seems like we need uh, special tools to go beat on this stuff. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's so, <clears throat> so if we're missing this human performance piece, if we're not 
um, uh, focusing on that, um, that is where we allow ourselves to have repeat failures show up again over and over again. And we were talking earlier about Hind Block and his mm. tables um, yeah. and how Taproot incorporated those and just a history with Mark and, and Hines. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Yeah. What you know about it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. You know, uh, with Taproot, uh, Mark Paradise obviously is, is the human performance expert, Mark and Linda, um, that got together and, and put the Taproot process together. And it was focused on humans and why humans make mistakes and, um, and, and how to avoid that. Um, um, but uh, Mark and Linda won't tell you that they are equipment experts. They are they're human performance experts. Um, Heinz Block, uh, who used to work for uh, Exxon before they were Exxon Mobil and um, who is now an independent consultant, um, he was their equipment troubleshooting expert. And uh, if you ever read any of Heinz Block's articles and his, uh, um, uh, some of his writings, it's, it's really cool. He, he has this innate understanding that, you know, the equipment didn't just fail, that somebody broke the equipment. Right? And you can listen to him talk about that. So he has this innate understanding of human performance as it relates to equipment failures. Um, but but Mark, Heinz isn't necessarily a trained human performance expert. Um, so Mark and Heinz met um, and realized they were coming at equipment problems from, uh, from different directions for the same type of issues, human performance. Um, and uh, Mark's human performance expertise with Heinz Block's uh, equipment troubleshooting expertise really are a good marriage, and that's where the Equifactor tables um, are, are initially developed from in our Taproot software. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Very cool. And with that, with Equifactor, as you're mm -hmm. talking about it, um, we have courses that we offer. We do. Um, and then you're also a co-author with Mark on a book all about that as well. That's right. Yeah, we have a, a book that we've uh, put together to describe the Equifactor troubleshooting piece of it. Um, uh, that book uh, talks about generic troubleshooting techniques. It talks about um, uh, how to use uh, the Equifactor tables that are built into the system. Uh, and then it also talks about how you will take the results of your Equifactor analysis and feed that into the Taproot system to get the human performance problems. So um, that book is the basis of the training courses that we teach. Um, we have several courses that are available. We can teach, um, uh, we can teach uh, equipment experts and, and uh, maintenance and reliability folks how to use Equifactor and Taproot together. So when you're done with this two-day course, you now know how to use Equifactor and how to use Taproot. Mm -hmm. um, we can also, um, if you wish, just, just teach the Equifactor techniques without getting into Taproot if you wish, if you wish to, to, to go in that direction and just learn equipment troubleshooting. So we can teach that separately if you wish. Um, I honestly feel that you really need to get the taproot piece in. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you're missing that human performance piece and, and not, uh, uh, not getting everything that you can get out of the system. Yeah, so. especially because it's the number one cause. It's the number one cause by Google. Uh, as, according to Google, <laughs> it's yeah, the number if, one if cause. If it's on the Internet, you know it's true. It's got to be right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. So, yeah. so those are our options for that. Um, we're actually, uh, we have uh, several courses scheduled in person, and we are actually scheduling a virtual uh, Equifactor two-day course also. So that will be available uh, later this, and this, and uh, probably fourth quarter is, is what we're looking oh, at putting that in. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're looking so, forward to that. So yeah. if you're interested in learning more about uh, stopping human error, especially when it deals with equipment, then you want to get in that course. Mm -hmm. And our courses are on our website, which is taproot.com forward slash courses, or you can go to forward slash store, and you can search by your location. You can see courses that are available in person mm -hmm. versus virtually, and we also come to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we have lots of options to get your, your team trained up and to, to really help you with your improvement programs out there. And, um, you know, a lot of companies are focused on their HSE improvement programs, and that's great. Uh, but don't forget, you can use the system for equipment problems. You can use it for quality issues. You can use it for medical issues, uh, uh, process problems. Uh, there's, I tell people, any place people make mistakes, you can use Taproot to help with that. So, um, so don't uh, limit yourself. Yeah, if it's a systematic approach, um, something easy to follow. One more thing I want to just put in there before we, we end is you mentioned um, – a lot of times we have in our minds, uh, we've ex you know we've experienced something before, and mm. well, that's got to be what the problem is. 
sometimes it's not the case. Yeah. Um, so yeah. another benefit with our software is you can find other options, things maybe you haven't thought of exactly. to help diagnose and, and correct the problem. Yeah, specifically for equipment problems, but this is true even with the rest of Taproot, is um, it's really designed to give your equipment troubleshooting experts, if you have a, a pump that doesn't work and you find out that it wasn't turned on, well, you probably don't need Equifactor for that. You'll yeah. figure that out on your own. But um, the problem it comes up when your experts go out, they use their own internal knowledge to troubleshoot something, mm -hmm. and they still can't figure it out. And that's really where Equifactor shines at that point, is to give your experts some additional thoughts and ideas on what could cause particular issues with your equipment. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Excellent. Thanks. Absolutely. Thanks yeah. for joining today. Yeah, um, and thanks for joining us as well. If you will tune in, each week, we premiere these on Wednesdays at noon on Facebook Live and on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, subscribe and ring the bell, and be sure to just keep checking back for more Taproot tips. Excellent. Thanks. All right, Elmay, thanks. We'll talk to you all yeah. later. Bye-bye.